In today's video, we're going to take a look back at the 2013 NHL Entry Draft, and we're going to complete a redraft for the top 15 selections. And that's coming up next. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. We review and discuss all 31 NHL teams, so if you're a huge hockey fan, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So as I mentioned off the top, today we're going to be doing a redraft for the 2013 NHL Draft, and we're going to do the first 15 selections. Part of what got me thinking about doing this video was a few days ago we had a trade between the Montreal Canadiens and the Calgary Flames involving former first round selections from this draft. I had completed some redraft videos back in March where I took a look at three other draft years and at some point in time I intended to jump back in and do a few more of these. So I figured with that trade going down and all the talk around the 2013 draft lately, now might be a good time to go back and have a look at it. First off, I'm going to show you how the actual first 15 selections went down in their actual order and then we'll complete their redraft and show you how I would rank them here today. Now obviously first overall was Nathan McKinnon to the Colorado Avalanche. The Florida Panthers were up next at number two and took Alexander Barkov. At the time Barkov was kind of looked upon as a little bit of a surprise pick but he's turned out quite nicely for the Panthers. Number three Tampa Bay selected Jonathan Druin. Obviously he was a teammate of Nate McKinnon and to Halifax Mooseheads in the QMJHL. Uh, they played great together in junior and he ended up going three to Tampa. At number four was Seth Jones to the Nashville Predators. Now, going into this draft, Seth Jones was a potential number one overall selection. It was heavily speculated leading into this draft that he might be the number one selection. Uh, it was one of those drafts where there wasn't a clear-cut number one, but Jones was probably the one that was discussed the most heading into the draft, and he ended up falling down to number four to Nashville. Next up at number five, the Carolina Hurricanes selected Elias Lindholm. Followed at number six, the Calgary Flames took Sean Monaghan. Edmonton had the number seven selection and took Darnell Nurse. The Buffalo Sabres had the number eight selection and selected defenseman Rasmus Ristolainen. The number nine selection belonged to the Vancouver Canucks where they selected Bo Horvat. Now leading into this draft, they did not hold that selection. It was held by the New Jersey Devils. But on the draft floor is when we saw the trade between the Canucks and the Devils trading goaltender Corey Schneider from Vancouver to New Jersey to obtain this selection. And they got Bo Horvat. So I'd say that deal worked out pretty good for the Canucks. Obviously ever since their goaltendings had a little bit of a question mark. But Horvat's certainly an excellent player. A potential future captain I think will work out quite nicely for them long term. Dallas selected Valerie Nishushkin at number 10. The Philadelphia Flyers selected defenseman Samuel Morin at number 11. Now, even though he hasn't had a whole lot of NHL experience at this point, we did cover him in the Flyers prospect video. I do think he's still going to turn out to be a pretty decent NHL player. At number 12, the Coyotes selected forward Max Domi. Obviously, he was just recently traded to the Habs for Alex Galchenyuk. Winnipeg selected next at number 13, taking defenseman Josh Morrissey. The Columbus Blue Jackets selected at number 14, taking center iceman Alex Wenberg. The number 15 selection belonged to the New York Islanders and they selected defenseman Ryan Pollock. Now Ryan Pollock just recently got his career going as well. He really emerged last year to be a, a decent looking defenseman for the Islanders. Uh, so as you know, some of these players take longer than others to get to the NHL. Uh, but we're certainly going to do a redraft here of where these players would be ranked today based on their performance thus far in their NHL careers. We're also going to take a look at some of the so-called draft busts from the first round. We're five years removed now from this draft, so I think it's Pretty safe to label a few of these players as draft busts. Uh, for the most part, the ones that are going to be bigger stars at least don't usually take that long to make the NHL be regular players and be starting to put up some decent statistics. For the most part here, the players we talked about that were drafted in the first 15 selections are all pretty good or still developing to the point where I wouldn't call them busts. But there were a fair bit of them in the second half of this first round. The number 17 selection was held by the Ottawa Senators where they selected Curtis Lazar. Now Lazar, again, like many guys, had a tremendous junior career. Looked like he was going to be a really solid two-way center. Probably project to be a number two, number three guy in the NHL. Uh, be very responsible defensively with an offensive upside. And he has not panned out at all. Uh, unfortunately, Ottawa ended up trading him to Calgary for a second-round selection. And he hasn't really flourished there either. So after all this time, I think Lazar, unfortunately, is going to look like a draft bust. Obviously, the two players involved in the Habs and Flames trade we talked about the other day. We had Kirby Reichel, who was originally drafted by the Columbus Blue Jacket and has bounced around a fair bit. Now off to the Calgary Flames. I think we can label Reichel a bust as well. Same thing for the guy he was traded for in Hunter Shinkarik. Obviously, Shinkarik was originally drafted by the Canucks off to Calgary. Now he's off to Montreal. He never really panned out either. So unfortunately, he's looking like a draft bust as well. 
The other guy I'd kind of throw in this category is the number 25 selection for the Montreal Canadiens, Michael McCarron. Obviously, when he was drafted and as a first-round selection, as a center iceman uh, with good size, you know, they certainly uh, thought they'd seen a lot more in him than what he's been able to provide so far. At this point in time, it's debatable if McCarron is going to be a regular NHL player. Even if McCarron does turn out to be more of a regular in the NHL, I don't think he'll ever live up to that first-round hype was when he was first drafted. Before we begin the redraft here, four of the players originally selected in the top 15 are not going to be making my new top 15, and obviously the order for the most part here is going to be a little bit different as well. So let's get started here with number 15 and work our way up to number one. The number 15 selection, I would select Andre Burakovsky of the Washington Capitals, who was drafted later in the first round by the Capitals at number 23. At number 14, I would select Shea Theodore, obviously currently a defenseman for the Vegas Golden Knights, originally selected later in the first round, number 26 by the Anaheim Ducks. It's unfortunate that the Ducks had to part with Theodore through the expansion draft, but obviously they have a lot of good young defensemen, uh, so unfortunately they weren't able to keep them all. And Theodore is fitting quite nicely with Vegas, and it's looking like he's going to be a top four defenseman here for many years to come. At number 13, I've got Max Domi. Now, as we already discussed, Domi was originally selected at number 12. Domi had a pretty solid rookie year and has kind of tailed off his last few years here at the Coyotes. Hopefully, the trade to Montreal will rejuvenate his career and get him back on track. I do like Domi's game. I do think he has the potential to be a pretty solid 20 to 25 goal scorer if he can get things situated. He's shown he's had the potential in the past, but even amongst all the other guys taken later than him, he still has one of the better looking stat sheets amongst all the players from this draft. So he still holds down the number 13 selection. At number 12, we get defenseman Darnell Nurse from the Edmonton Oilers. Now, originally, obviously, Nurse was originally drafted a little bit higher. So I do see some other players that were taken after him that probably should have gone ahead. But of course, like I said, these teams don't have a crystal ball. They do the best they can. But obviously, Nurse has proven to be a pretty decent defenseman for the Edmonton Oilers right now. Obviously, he's a guy right now looking for a contract, too. He's still an unsigned RFA as we're getting close to training camp and the start of the 18-19 season. Uh, but Nurse certainly proved to be a very serviceable defenseman for the Oilers and should be for many years to come. At number 11, I'd select Pittsburgh Penguins winger Jake Gensel. Now, Jake Gensel was originally drafted way lower down at number 77. Jake Gensel's proven to be a very valuable winger for the Pittsburgh Penguins, especially in the playoffs. If, if playoff Jake Gensel could play through all the regular season and put up those type of numbers like he did in the past couple playoff series, obviously that would prove to be very valuable for his career. Uh, obviously playing along with guys like Crosby, he's fitted nicely on the wing and can certainly produce at that spot. Um, but Jake Gensel originally dropped him much lower, has worked his way all the way up to number 11 here on my list. Number 10, we've got Alexander Wenberg of the Columbus Blue Jackets. Wenberg obviously had a little bit of a down season last year, like a lot of the Blue Jackets players did, offensively speaking. Uh, but I do see him still with a lot of strong potential. He's a player I certainly hope to have a bounce back season coming up here for the Columbus Blue Jackets. But Wenberg still had a pretty solid career. I do expect him to be a very solid offensive player and a good two-way center for the Blue Jackets for a long time here. So he certainly still holds down that number 10 selection. At number 9, we would select Rasmus Ristolainen. Obviously, Ristolainen was originally only selected one spot higher at number 8, so not a great deal of change for him. He's proven to be a pretty decent defenseman for the Sabres. I know his defensive stats don't look the greatest playing on a, at a poorly defensive team like the Sabres, but hopefully things will only continue to get better as the other Rasmus, Rasmus Dahlin, the generational talent selected at number 1 overall in 2018, comes along, along with the other moves they've made this season to hopefully see an improved Buffalo Sabres club moving forward. At number eight, we've got Elias Lindholm, originally drafted at number five by Carolina, now a member of the Calgary Flames. Lindholm quite hasn't projected to be the offensive star that he was drafted to be, but still put up some pretty decent numbers, especially playing in Carolina, who's been on some weaker teams. That's certainly not going to help matters. Obviously, the Calgary Flames have a lot of confidence in him moving forward with that new contract that they gave him after the trade happened. Uh, so we'll see what Lindholm can accomplish playing in, hope, most likely in a top six role with the Flames here this season. At number seven, we've got Anthony Mantha of the Detroit Red Wings. Now, Mantha was originally drafted much lower than this as well, but certainly works his way up this list. He certainly has a couple of really strong seasons under his belt. I see Mantha as a pretty solid 30-goal guy moving forward. Uh, obviously, him along with Dylan Larkin are the new cornerstones for that Red Wings franchise in order to move forward here. At number six, I've got Jonathan Druin. Now, Druin was originally taken number three by the Tampa Bay Lightning, as we know. Later traded from Mikhail Sergachev over to the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, at this point in time, Druin does have some solid offensive abilities. Certainly still worthy to be high up in the draft, but I do have him dropping back a few spots here to number six. At number five, I've got Bo Horvat of the Vancouver Canucks. Now, as we discussed going through the, the original draft selections, he was taken at number nine. Uh, so, it's, from my opinion, he's had a pretty solid start to his career. Certainly deserves to move up on this list. Of course, that was a selection that was traded from between the, the Canucks and the Devils there. Uh, but, obviously, Bo Horvat has turned out to be a great player 
for the Canucks and has one, had one of the better careers so far amongst all these first round selections. At number four, I've got Alexander Barkov of the Florida Panthers. Now, obviously, Barkov originally went number two, and this was a pick that I struggled with a little bit because Barkov is an underrated player, and he does accomplish a lot of things on the ice uh, that are not necessarily going to show on the stat sheet. He's a future potential Selkie Trophy winner, tremendous two-way center, has really solid offensive skills too to boot, so he's really one of the league's more complete players for sure. Uh, this The top four here was a little bit difficult for me to figure out. And to be honest, I could have made an argument for him going at number four, number three, or even number two. Um, so if really, I'd love to hear your comments. This is one of the ones I struggle with. Where would you put Barkov on this list? I did drop him down from number two to number four, uh, but it's not that I don't like Barkov. He's a tremendous player. He's got some great offensive stats. His defensive game is solid. He certainly deserves to be really high in this draft. But I had to drop him down to number four here. At number three, I've got Sean Monaghan of the Calgary Flames. At this point in your career, Sean Monaghan has more goals of any other player in this draft class. So that is the deciding factor I used to put him ahead of Barkov. Monaghan was one of the players who went directly to the NHL with the Flames upon being drafted and has had a really great start to his career. It's been a pretty solid 30 goal scorer, certainly one of the key members and leaders of the Calgary Flames. Um, so for me, Sean Monaghan at this point has just accomplished a little bit more. At number two, I went with defenseman Seth Jones. Now, Jones, like I said, was originally in the discussion for the potential number one overall selection. He was one of the guys, probably along with McKinnon, but I think Jones, if I remember correctly, was getting more of the media attention as being the most likely number one selection going into the draft. I mean, I had a feeling Colorado would take the high scoring forward McKinnon, which they ended up doing. Uh, but Seth Jones really, I mean, defensemen sometimes do take a little bit longer to develop, especially where they're looked upon more of a defensive game as well as the offensive game. But at this point in his career, Seth Jones has emerged as one of the top five defensemen in the NHL, in my opinion. If you've seen my video uh, out here in the last week discussing the top 20 NHL defensemen, I had Seth Jones ranked pretty high and for good reason. I see Jones as a potential future Norris Trophy winner. At this point, like he's really emerged as a top D in the league. If you have a top two or three selection in the NHL draft and you can grab yourself a stud defenseman, you're more likely going to do so. So I think the number two selection would be Seth Jones. I think you can make an argument that his skill set is just unique enough and valuable enough that you should take him over some of the other guys that I have just below him. And at number one, the highest scoring player in this draft, who was originally drafted number one, I would leave Nathan McKinnon, number one overall, the highest scoring player in the draft so far. More likely going to hold that down for quite some time. Some of the other players here are turning out to be great players as well. Hard to say if they catch up to McKinnon in scoring. Uh, but Nathan McKinnon, in my opinion, for the Avalanche, especially for that team and how he fits there and what he brings to that team, I think he was the best choice for the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, at some point, though, depending on how these players evolve, maybe there could be an argument for a Barkov or a Jones. Only time will tell. We don't know how things are going to affect these players longer term. There's always injuries and other things that you're just unable to predict. Uh, so we'll see how this goes. I'd love to hear your comments down below how you'd rank these players. If you're doing a redraft, what order would you put them in? And we can discuss further in the comment section. If you're new to the channel here, hope you consider subscribing. We cover all 31 NHL teams. And there's plenty of content here for all hockey fans to enjoy. I'm going to drop a playlist down below in the, in the description as well for my other redraft videos in case you missed those back. They were recorded back in March. And you can take a look at those and let me know what you think of those as well. As always, thank you very much for watching, everybody. We will catch you next time.